Good afternoon, Pastor David. How you doing, John? Welcome, everybody, to A Random Moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. Welcome home. Yeah. I know that you had a, you were sharing with me a fruitful time in, it was good. in New Mexico. At Enjoyed least, ourselves. Uh, you were telling me that you were able to minister to, how many pastors were at this? Well, 21 churches were represented. Um, I had a chance to meet with about 15 of the pastors, I'd say, because some of the pastors uh, were were unable to, because of circumstances surrounding their churches or their family, one of the pastors had, for example, his wife had gotten ill, he wasn't able to go, so some didn't come. But we had, um, I believe it was 21 churches represented. Wow. Wow. It was good, we enjoyed it. The food was good? Well, you know, it was a good conference. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know we've missed you, Pastor, and welcome back. And we're looking forward to tomorrow's study as you continue the series in Marriage of the Family and looking at husbands. And, you know, one of the things I've been thinking about, I was thinking about what to ask you today is, you know, I don't know if you would believe this or think this, but has there been a shift or a uh, the importance of holiness and being filled with the Spirit? Has there been, especially within the family and husbands and wives, do you see a shift away from that? Do you see that that's not so much the big thing anymore in, in terms of the the family unit staying together? Because one of the things I was thinking about is, is you know, the Holy Spirit, we're to be filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes we can allow so much clutter in our hearts that we don't make room for the Spirit to come and dwell within us. And I wanted your feedback on the importance as as a, as we're going to be looking at husbands now, as Paul was talking about being spirit filled, he was even then talking about how important it was. Pastor, how important? And it's kind of a twofold question. How important is it for the husband to be to allow the spirit to fill him? Because it tells us here that we have a duty to sanctify our wives or the have the love to that we may sanctify him cleansing with the washing of the water of the word. Well, you know, uh, every every person who has come to faith in Christ, the moment that they confess Christ as Savior and, and are cleansed and all of the things that pertain to salvation, the Holy Spirit indwells them. So the um, Bible, 1 Corinthians 3 and various other passages, say that we are the temple of the Spirit of God and that the Spirit of God dwells within us. So every genuine believer has the Holy Spirit. Being filled with the Spirit is a command that is given by Paul in, in the Ephesians. Um, and uh, because being filled with the Holy Spirit uh, speaks of the, the power of the Holy Spirit working within us and influencing us and, and uh, directing us. It, it speaks concerning the power of the Spirit living within the believer and us not quenching him, but yielding to him as he works within us. And so there are quite a number of people who live as if they don't even know there's such a one as the Holy Spirit. Uh, because perhaps they have, they have never really considered scripture, perhaps they haven't even read it, or in church, perhaps their pastors never addressed the issue of being filled continuously, being open to the work of the Holy Ghost. And so what begins in the spirit, they get married, God brought them together, they pledge their lives to Christ and make vows to serve God together. And now what begins in the spirit ends up being worked out in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, there's a, a lack of the spirit's presence in the marriage. And that, that is the result of the lack of the spirit's presence in each of the individuals and can also be the result of a uh, of uh, rather a, a husband uh, failing to wash his water his his wife with the water of the word and th that happens, I would say, very frequently. That may even be the common experience in many in many marriages. And one of the reasons I would feel that that's possibly true is the divorce rate amongst evangelical Christians is according to at least one survey that I read, even greater than the divorce rate amongst atheists. Wow. Yeah, think about that for a minute. Atheists are, are 
keeping their promises and quote unquote evangelical Christians are breaking them. Mm. And uh, what would that be the result of? It would be a result of husbands, at least portion of it, not washing their wives with the water of the word, not loving them in a sacrificial fashion, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, right? And so the Holy Spirit is the one who works within the believer, enabling us to live the sacrificial life, to lay our lives down for our wives, and to, um, and to succeed in leading a home, leading our, our wife, leading our children, and uh, doing those things that are pleasing to God. You, and and you, it's amazing, as we look at this, we look at the, the gravity of the, what Paul's instructing the husbands to do. We can often, as husbands, as we jokingly, as you jokingly did when we first started this marriage and family series, wives submit to your own husbands and drop the mic and walk away. That's right? it. We were like, wipe, wipe our hands off. But the impact and the magnitude and the gravity of the role of the husband and the responsibility to love our wives as Christ has loved the church and gave himself for her, that he may sanctify her and wash. Yes. Those are really heavy duty responsibilities Absolutely. of the husband. When a lot of husbands are either so, so captivated by the world or working so hard on their jobs or you know, the, and, and, and let's face it right now in, in the United States, here in California at this time, there are a lot of distractions, a lot of things taking place that, that take our eyes off of the things that, that really matter in the more spiritual and practical way. Meaning that sometimes because of the pressure and concerns and and all the things that pertain to feeding a family and caring for a house and making a payment and all of those things, we, we can be distracted. And we take our eyes off of the foundational things and, and we put them on the things that, that matter, but not in the same priority, list of priorities. And so we take our eyes off the ball. And so, I, I would encourage every husband to, to take a deep breath and to reevaluate. Every, every believing husband ought to do that. What is, what is it that matters? What should I be doing? How can I, how can I encourage my wife in the pressure she goes through? How can I be a better father? Things like that. And um, to be aware of those things. And I think that, that in times like this where, where there is a concentrated effort to depress the church, to oppress and depress the church. The enemy is working overtime in, in, in the United States, as he does throughout the world. But I think here in California, there are many who have been taken by the COVID scares and, and um, you know, having to homeschool their children and do things that they hadn't really been, you know, trained in or, or perhaps never felt qualified to do. All those things that have taken place, John, uh, has really taken um, its toll on believers, you know, and, and, and many of them got caught up with just staying home on Sunday and, and their children have no real fellowship anymore with believing children, going to church, being supplemented, any of the spiritual life being supplemented by the work of the body of Christ here in their home fellowship and all. And what happens is you begin to drift away because of the things that have mattered to the point of taking your eyes off the things that really matter, have become greater. And so I've seen uh, many, many men who have um, fallen to that temptation. But um, not all have, but a good amount have. And so, yeah, tomorrow as we gather, I'll be sharing some of these, these things with men. And if you can come, I'd love to have you with us. If you can't uh, be with us, then perhaps you can watch online join us online service starts at 7 p.m we're celebrating communion yep. after our bible study yep. so church family it's a great opportunity to invite your friends and family to come out and enjoy a time of worship spending time in god's word spending time in fellowship and spending time in communion with amen. the Lord. amen so we look forward to having you guys come out pastor thank you so much for of sharing course. this and uh please tune in uh and like our page uh, go to our page and like it we have pastor david as his Bible studies on YouTube. We can go. To, you can go to Calvary Chapel Chino Valley on YouTube, get all his teachings, and uh, and we do look forward to having you join us. 
And Pastor, thank you so much. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for tuning in.